few years back when I first started getting into turtle conservation work, when I was a kid, um, I didn't have soccer practice and saxophone practice. My mother kicked me out, said, come back at dinner, and I went and lived in the swamp, which was nearby, in Bayside, New York. And that's where all the kids played amongst the you know, toxic waste, and there were also turtles. And I played in the swamp. And then, 40 years later, I go to the swamp, and it's Alley Pond Environmental Center. It's been cleaned up. <laughs> and the first, one of the first terrapin conservationists or turtle conservationists I met was Russ Berg, who's doing research at Alley Pond Park. And I was like, oh my god, this is really scary kismet here. Um, so I'm going to give it off to Russ. Thanks again for coming. Russ Berg is the, a professor at Hofstra University. He is the chair of the National Diamondback Terrapin Working Group. And he is going to lead us for the rest of the day. I've been doing it for 12 years or so now, and I know some of you have been doing it for way longer. I feel like a novice. Uh, so um, I have a lot to learn, and I'm hoping to learn a lot from the folks who've been doing it a real long time. Uh, but I've been doing turtle work for, a long, for longer than that, but terrapins are almost not turtles because they're so different from all the rest. So. Anyway, uh, the uh, Diamondback Terrapin Working Group has slowly evolved from, uh, from a variety of different sources. So some of you are new to this, and I'll give you a very brief synopsis. Uh, oh man, how many years ago? Uh, 15 or 16 years ago, uh, a group of folks in the southeast who were working on terrapins all got together and had a re relatively informal meeting to focus on this, this one turtle that is, like I said, so different from all the others in so many important ways. And, and you guys know some of those ways. And uh, it has very special concerns, different from the concerns that lots of other turtles have. So the conservation issues are very, very separate for terrapins. Not sea turtles, but almost sea turtles. Not freshwater turtles, but almost freshwater turtles. And, you know, nesting in habitats that almost nobody else does and very special problems. And that initial group has uh, slowly uh, expanded to include other people who work on terrapins in other places. And uh, we've had now three national meetings. National means East Coast. So you can say national, even though it's just the East Coast. Uh, and we can say it's the entire country. Yeah, but yeah, it's just the Atlantic Coast. That it announces our next national meeting, which will be in 2010, uh, in New Orleans. Uh, so uh, I really encourage all of you to start thinking about doing that. We're going to plan it outside the hurricane season, which is getting harder and harder. Welcome to uh, Mass Audubon's Wealthy Bay Wildlife Sanctuary. And, and some people are struck by the fact that Audubon is uh, working on, on turtles, but it's really a sort of a, uh, a, a secret society within uh, a bird organization that uh, we study turtles. And um, truth be told, this is more of a turtle sanctuary than it is a bird sanctuary. We have the state-listed diamondback terrapin as a threatened species, and we also have um, the box turtle, which is a state-listed um, species. They both exist on the property. So we've actually spent a lot of time trying to make sure that when we put in trails or we do programs or things like that, that we're not really disrupting either one of those species. And so far, uh, we seem to be pretty successful at, uh, at keeping uh, both those populations uh, going. And we've had a good fortune in, uh, to have a great many uh, talented people involved in the, in the project, and uh, none more so than Don Lewis, who unfortunately retired to uh, our end of the Cape, uh, what, 10 years ago, 12 years ago? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we've uh, really ramped up a, a, lot of the, a lot of the turtle work. And, uh, and, and documented it. If you're not familiar with the Turtle Journal and other other uh, uh, turtle um, uh, productions and, and uh, uh, newsletters and, and blogs or websites, whatever we're calling them, uh, you should uh, tune into Dawn's, and you'll get a good sense of uh, what's going on here. But today, <coughs> excuse me, we thought we would um, just try and orient everybody. I know some of you are familiar with Cape Cod and where it's located and the different. Um, habitats and, and different uh, landforms that we're uh, going to visit, and we thought this would be a good way to uh, to get you oriented, and then also introduce you to uh, the folks here on the Cape that have been uh, working with Diamondback Terrapin. So I'm going to turn it over to Dawn, and uh, uh, and Bob and I will sort of uh, uh, do the uh, brick and rack for a few minutes, and then get us started. Hopefully, uh, you saw how I zeroed right in from. Uh, from God in his heavens, uh, right here to the actual Garden of Eden. Just send checks, there's no need to actually come. Uh, 
I do want to take a moment to introduce you to the geography and to the species in its geography. As Bob was suggesting, we have a, an enormous luxury out here on the Outer Cape, which is people come here to retire. And those people tend to be very high-powered executives or very successful people elsewhere in their lives. They come here, they're 55 years old, and they need something to do. And Bob always has something to do. Uh, and luckily, that's how we sustain our uh, research effort out here. And I'm going to talk a little bit about it. Here is our uh, South Coast uh, uh, effort, which is on the other side of the canal. It's almost like a different world. It is a different world. Yeah, and the people, some of the principals involved in that are the young lady over here with the camera that's pointing it at me. Uh, Sue Weaver Nurse, would you want to This is a very large estuary system, well called Wellfleet Bay. We've learned a ton of information over the last uh, three decades about how terrapins use that population. We started off by thinking they were non-migratory, that everybody stayed in their estuary system, and that was it. Uh, we found out, and we can talk more about this if you're interested, about how these characters uh, crisscross. There's a sort of a highway out there, and how they crisscross and use the entire habitat. Uh, right up here is the, uh, I used to call it the singles bar. Uh, Barbara uh, corrected me uh, to become more scientific, and we now call it a mating aggregation, is that it? <laughs> Singles bar works. Uh, and so every terrapin uh, uh, in the Wellfleet Bay system scoots up to the singles bar uh, in early May and, uh, and you know, trade text messages, they, uh, you know, catch a few movies, and uh, spend a few weeks up here, and then they scoot out and they di uh, dis disperse all throughout the system. And the, the size difference changes right at Cape Cod Canal. So the turtles that uh, Michael and Susan work on the other side of the canal, they're big, normal. And these guys are tiny. This girl is, um, oh, she's around uh, 16 and a little bit uh, centimeters. She weighs around 900 grams, my sweetheart. Uh, and um, he's about 12 centimeters long. He weighs about 300 uh, grams. He's a typical, typical male. And uh, so that gives you a sense of uh, what the turtles are that, uh, that we deal with. And they'll be up here if anybody wants to meet them up close and personal. Hey, sweetheart. Bay, which is within the political boundaries of New York City, and I'll show you some pictures in just a moment. Uh, so it's a very, very urban setting. So, you know, we're, we're, we're you know, surrounded by, you know, the 11th largest city in the world uh, right there. And uh, that provides a whole host of uh, interesting problems and a few advantages. For one thing, we have tons of volunteers, too, because if you want to work on wildlife and you're, and you're living in New York City, you can take the train down to our study site and get off the subway and walk to our site, as some of our volunteers do. Uh, so uh, so that's, that's a nice thing. The downside is that all the things that come from living next to the 11th largest city in the world, as you can probably imagine. Um, the setting is very odd. Jamaica Bay, it's the only place I've worked on terrapin, so it's great for me to see other places, but I tend to think that's what terrapin habitat is like, and then I come out here and see what it's really like. The, the setting at Jamaica Bay is very odd, and it has presented a whole host of problems. For one thing, um, almost all of our work on terrapins comes from watching them nest. And we, can almost, we n almost never see them any other time of the year. We can't catch them in the water at all. We've been totally unsuccessful for years to catch the water. They won't go in traps. We can't set up nets. We can't use the troll nets. We can't use any of the standard netting situations, and for reasons I can bore you with for hours. We try, and they don't work. Uh, and uh, I'm definitely scrambling to find ways to find out what they're doing. You know, Archie Carr said something like, you know, 99% of what we know about turtles is what they do 1% of the time when they're on shore nesting. And, you know, the rest of the time is the important stuff. Uh, and uh, so we really, really need to get a handle on the rest of that. Uh, so we learned a lot about which marshes they go to. At least we're starting to get a little bit. We know where they go after they've got done, gotten done nesting. And they've all moved to the southwest. So there's our release point right there. And then, uh, I guess some of them to the west. And they go to these marshes over here. So at least, and these are some of the most rapidly eroding marshes in Jamaica Bay, these, these marshes right here. You know these marshes. These are marshes that are disappearing very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. So these terrapins are heading to marsh sites that are disappearing quickly. Now, one thing that's interesting here is that some marshes not far from here are being restored. The Park Service is spraying sediment out there and planting stuff there. And we'd love to know if the terrapins are recolonizing those, those restored marshes.